Consider this. In his letter to the Romans, Paul talks about a hope for resurrection. That is, for restoration of all of creation. And he explains that this full restoration isn't even something that we can grasp or even properly imagine, but it is something in which we place all of our hope. He says in verse 24 that hope that is seen isn't hope, for who hopes for what he's seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And this hope, this hope that we have as Christians, is for the time when we will all, by the grace of God, be genuinely, gloriously, and freely human living as these image bearers in the perfect presence of God and then casting his image back into creation. Being in perfect communion with God and thus with each other in creation is where our hope lies as Christians. But then Paul says in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You see, when Paul talks about our weakness in our weakness, it means that we often pray out of selfishness or out of fear, even if we don't realize it or mean to do that. We often pray prayers that are quite simply not in harmony with God's will, they're in harmony with our will. And and we see this often in the world. We hear it from, from prosperity preachers who incidentally are nothing more than the snake oil salesmen of the Christian church who claim that God has to give you your heart's desire if you just pray with faith. And this, incidentally, is absolutely antithetical to Christ. The prosperity doctrine is the doctrine of antichrist. But Paul is explaining that just as God is going to restore all of creation, the Holy Spirit works within us today to begin to restore our hearts. That way, our hearts would become more like God's heart. You see, the goal of prayer isn't that God would give us our heart's desire, but rather the goal of prayer is that he would change our hearts to have his desire. Do you see the difference? Because then and only then will our prayers be powerful tools that participate with God's will. But fear, anger, broken hearts, all of these things, they can often lead to a lack of faith in God. They can make it difficult to to love humanity the way that God does or even to want to participate with God's will for humanity. And the problem of evil, it's so big, it's so intertwined in the complexities of life that for many of us, we just hope, well, well, I hope God's wrath would just wipe it out and get rid of it and cut it all out and get rid of all the people who participate all together. But God, out of love, doesn't do that. He offers instead a gift of empathy. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to work within us, then we can begin to feel other people's pains as well. And this can become absolutely overwhelming because we all know that it's difficult enough to deal with my own pains. Why would I want to feel other people's? But we need to in order to participate, in order to be driven to care for them. And so the Holy Spirit groans within us. He groans within us so that our broken hearts are in harmony with God's heart. And without ever speaking a word, God knows exactly what we ask of Him for others. See, prayer isn't some magic spell that we say in order to make our food more nutritious, or to coerce God into giving us what we think we want. Prayer isn't so that we can show off to others or prove how righteous and sanctified we are. Prayer, at its deepest level, is about being filled with the Holy Spirit so that you are not alone as His love drives you to change this world. It's about being in constant communication and communion with the Father through the Holy Spirit as you reflect Jesus back into the world. So yes, pray out loud. Yes, ask God to bless all the things of life. Yes, pray privately. Pray corporately. Yes, pray. But if you're not driven by a passion to bring hope into this world, then pray first that gift of perfect love that comes only from God. Because that's what it means to be genuinely, gloriously, freely, and prayerfully human. That's something worth considering.